Steve, it's been a while since we last caught up. There's a couple of things I wanted to pick your brains about. Um, starting with the under-18s, though, they've got to a crucial point in the season, closing in on the league title. How impressed have you been with them this season? The under-18s have been fantastic this season. Uh, you know, and like you say, we're getting to that point where you know there's there's not many games left. We're, we're a few points behind Rangers, but we've got some games in hand. Uh, that's all well and good, but we've still got to grind these results out, and, and that's tough because you know the programme is looking pretty hectic. Tuesday, Friday, uh, Sunday, Tuesday, Friday, like that's a t you know going to be a typical week running into the last few weeks of the season. So squeezing those games out and keeping everybody fit uh, is going to be a big ask. But they're they're very robust and they, they've had a fantastic season, and hopefully we can finish it off in style. Yeah, absolutely. They have had a fantastic season and they've shown some real progress yeah. both in the league at under 18 level, but some of the boys as well, they've also stepped up and you know been training with the first yeah. team, playing with the first team as well and got international cops as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, the nature of the games programme at 18s is, is, is really not the be-all and end-all. It's great when they can win games and be near the top of the, the table, if you like, but it's really about can you progress into the training environment with the first team, which many of them have. Can you then push yourself onto the bench, which a few of them have. Can you get in international recognition, which some of them have. So they're all kind of key indicators that everything's going in the right direction for that group. Uh, and the, the progress is there for everybody to see if you if you really delve deep and, and see how many are really performing in the first team environment and at an international level as well as domestically in that uh, CAS under-18 league. Does that give you a sense of pride when you see some of these younger lads, like Josh Connor make his debut at, at Pataudry in, yeah. in March, or, or some of the guys who are involved in the bench? Yeah, well, it's always good when you see, and I'm sure the fans are the same, the same when they see one of their own, if you like, and it's the same for us as staff, when we can see young guys coming through the academy and, you know, almost showcasing himself even if it's only for a short spell. If you can see them on the, the pitch for the first team, it's, it gives everybody a lift and gives great confidence all the way through the academy, not only in that age group, all the way further down into the younger age groups when they can see one of their kind of senior academy players, if you like, uh, bursting through into the first team scene. So uh, the, the, those 2004s, and I'll, I'll make... Uh, some of the fans that are watching feel old. Mm -hmm. That's the the year that uh, the under 18s, most of them were born. So those that 2004 group uh, is very very strong this year. Mm -hmm. And I guess the plan is to keep as many of these yeah. 2004s as possible for next season and to, to take part in the de development squad as well for next year. Yeah, correct. I mean that that group of 2004s. Plus we've also got some that are slightly older. You know, Tom Carter, our goalkeeper. We've got Jack Bryden, who's been out on loan at Edinburgh City. Stephen Bradley, who's out on loan at the moment. Uh, John Baldy, who's been at civil service on loan. Also, we've signed Runa Haugie, that that's had a little bit of first-team experience. So, those slightly older um, players, together with the current under-18 crop, uh, that'll be real. The, the real kind of... A, I would say the nucleus of the development team for next year moving forward, and that's going to be about 18 to 20 uh, players strong. So it's, a, it's a, a real good group, and that'll help us keep them in the building longer, coach them longer, and really hopefully bridge the, grip, the gap from where they are at the moment and push them on next year close to the first team. Yeah, definitely. And so talk to us about the development squad, the games programme for next year. So you're saying there's 18 to 20 people going to be playing in it, what kind of opposition can we expect to, them to play against? Yeah, it's, it's a good question because we've, we've actually been in talks with the SPFL and the, the SFA. There is a, a possibility that there will be a, a new reserve league format that we would support and be interested in. And together with that, we would supplement that with, with playing games that we've already mentioned in previous interviews down south, playing against teams uh, you know from England that would really push the players in a different direction you know it, it, sometimes when we play here everybody knows everybody they know you know all the other players and all the other teams whereas when you, you know you 
you push yourself down south, and you, you know, we're in talks with Brentford and Blackburn and Huddersfield, uh, to name a few. If we can go and play games at that level um, against their under 23s, would really be a big, I, I think, a big step to pushing them uh, and really making it, you know, really a much more kind of dynamic season for the development team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you touched on it briefly before, but how beneficial do you think having these kind of games and that, you know, varied, challenging environment is going to be for some of these lads? It's particularly the 18s who, p- before they might have just they might not have got a new contract or that would be them out of the building. How important yeah. is it to, to keep these people in the building and give them a chance to get into the first team? Yeah, well, I think if, if, we, if we're really honest and you have to sit and say how many of them right now, you know, in the next two weeks when, or three weeks when the season finishes, how many of them are, you know, potential squad players for the first team? Maybe not as many as we would have hoped, but simply because of their age. Uh, you know, their progress in the last... You know, a number of months has been exceptional. So if we can keep them for that extra year, you know, can we increase, can we make uh, the numbers much more that they're going to be able to supplement the first team? I think think the answer would be yes, because, you know, we we would trust the process that we can coach them, we can deliver a games programme, we can push them. And I think we can really make sure that there's a a high volume of them that progress up into the the first team ranks. So that's, that's the objective, really to keep them uh, and really just keep developing them for, for another 12 months mm-hmm. for sure it's going to be a big month for the under 18s in the next one so I wish you all the best luck for it thanks all roads lead to Easter Road join the journey